Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here. Today we're talking the Tetrarchs of Ultramar. Are they Gilliman's biggest mistake? General spoiler warning to begin, as today we will be referencing events from across the Warhammer 40k universe. So you have been warned, and with that said, let's just jump straight in. So the Tetrarchs of Ultramar. The giving over, or rather taking of power, from mortal human control to Astartes. Most definitely one of Gilliman's most controversial moves since his return. But if we're going to fairly question it, we need to be accurate on exactly what and who the Tetrarchs are, and what Gilliman's rationale is behind it. And for that, we receive those answers within the novel Dark Imperium. With the end of the first stage of the Indomitus Crusade, Gilliman returned to Ultramar to defend his realm against his brother Mortarion's assault. And upon his arrival, he assembled every senior command echelon of Ultramar together. From chapters to militarum, navy, night houses, and so on. Even the Inquisition were stated to be present. In the meeting, he stated his pride that Ultramar had retained the principles in which it had been founded. A beacon of hope and justice, an example to the rest of the Imperium. However, he realised he had made a mistake by reducing Ultramar in size with the implementation of the Codex so that the now vastly smaller Ultramarines chapter could manage the territory alone. He was also extremely displeased that his order a decade ago, that treaties of independence were rescinded to the 500 worlds, and that they be reincorporated back into Ultramar, had not been completed. A decade ago would pretty much be early in the Indomitus Crusade era, as at this point it had been going for 12 years, according to the new timeline. The reabsorbing of the 500 worlds into Ultramar control had not been completed because Imperial commanders and powers that be of certain worlds were resisting and reluctant to give up their power and authority, among other reasons. Thus, Gilliman unveiled a map of ancient Ultramar, its previous vastly larger size, coloured into five distinct areas. And he stated, as he couldn't rely on the local governors, he was reinstating the ancient Tetrarchy. Four members of the Adeptus Astartes, who would oversee the reabsorbing and organisation of their areas. They would have command over absolutely everything within, with the full permission and backing of Gilliman to use whatever diplomatic or military efforts they wished. Thereafter, they would remain in control to defend, develop and rebuild. The Tetrarchs would be named as Severus Agenman, first captain of the Ultramarines chapter. 2nd Company Captain Portan of the Genesis Chapter, Captain Balfus of the Doom Eagles Chapter, and Captain Felix of the Ultramarines. With Marnius Kalgar remaining in control of the core worlds of Ultramar, and to preside over the Tetrarchs. Now, perhaps one of the biggest questions is how are these captains going to rule and govern as Tetrarchs? and be serving Astartes. And well, Gilliman answered that by recommending all the chapters concerned promote a second captain within their particular company to take over. So it does raise some questions why Agenman's been spotted fighting back Highfleet Leviathan over on the western side of the galaxy, as he should be busy back in Ultramar as a Tetrarch with another standing captain for the first company. But hey, I digress. It's a very mixed bag here with Gilliman's actions. The Tetrarchs in principle make sense. You can see the logic behind it. 
Gilliman's return to a galaxy in turmoil ordered Ultramar to regain overall control of its former existing worlds, to ensure it's better defended and run, to prevent it all falling to darkness, and even that hasn't happened in 10 years. So he's had to be a bit more forceful, authoritative, implement overseers, supervisors, to ensure it's done. From his point of view, it all makes practical sense. And from the wider picture, again, it's a move for the better. We know Ultramar has been the one bright spot of the Imperium. Why not return it to its original size? So no, the Tetrarchs aren't a mistake from that perspective. In fact, it's absolutely the right move for Gilliman to make. We don't know a great deal about the Marines appointed in particular, but if Gilliman is confident that they are the right people for the job, then so be it. There's not a better judge of character out there. However, undoubtedly, it is a controversial move, and in particular from non-Astartes viewpoints. There's no skirting the issue. Gilliman is forcibly taking control into Astartes hands. Even from perfectly loyal worlds and governors, who have complied with everything ever asked. That doesn't have the best look to it. Worse still for morale on a wider perspective. You can skirt around the issue as much as possible, but the Imperium was always designed and intended to be run and governed by mortal humans. That was always the Emperor's vision. Now, the Imperium has most certainly not ended up the way he wanted, so you can counter with that. But it's an important fact regardless. Genetically enhanced warriors were not created to rule, and it was never the Emperor's intent for them to. Even statesman lines such as Gilliman's, Fulgrim's, Sanguinius's, none of them, and not even the Primarchs themselves. The famous confrontation between Malkador and Horus Lupercal may be the best example as to why. So I think you could be well-founded to argue that this is Gilliman doing what Gilliman does, what his detractors and doubters highlight, building an empire. And I think it is bang on. That's pretty much exactly what Gilliman is doing. But the simple fact is we don't truly know what instructions Gilliman was given by the emperor there's a possibility that even Gilliman doesn't quite know. For all Gilliman's emotional reaction to the Emperor's humanity being gone, we know he remembers that moment differently each time, and that Trajan Valoris saw Gilliman actually speaking quietly in a deep conversation with his father. So the Emperor could have well relayed his disappointment and told Rabute to get the Imperium back on track any way he can. And well, this is exactly how Gilliman would most likely go about it. Even L. Johnson, Gilliman's biggest doubter, and the man who most distrusted Gilliman's empire building, is appalled by the powers and institutions running the Imperium that he has seen. So there's a real possibility even he could think Gilliman is right to impose the Tetrarchs. It's definitely going to be an issue covered between them. Or at least surely so. So again, for all the bad look of it from a mortal position, it seems a valid option considering the mess the Imperium is in. And actually, it wasn't the revelation of the Tetrarchs that caused the biggest uproar from the human contingents present. What did cause an immediate and visceral uproar was Gilliman's following announcement that eight new chapters of his sons would be stationed within Ultramar, along with the freshly rebuilt site of the Emperor chapter and the Ultramarines, giving Gilliman ten chapters of Adeptus Astartes in his freshly expanded empire. Ten thousand of his 
sons. A legion. The cries went up immediately that this was Gilliman forming a legion to his face. Even when Gilliman countered that he personally forbade the legions, such was the vehemence and outrage against this, the mortal woman speaking to Gilliman didn't back down, even saying you did it before with the unnumbered sons. And you have to think how much conviction, courage, and sheer guts that you would have to have to stand up and argue and accuse a Primarch. A Primarch to their face. We see humans stunned to silent fear by ordinary space marines, let alone Primarchs. Yet here, they shout at him. A very, very revealing moment in the feeling of this decision. And it's this opposition that then leads to more questions regarding the Tetrarchs. More opposition. How the worlds of the Tetrarchs would be having their governors removed. And so forth. Which of course all leads to more opposition and more disgruntlement building. Now, Gilliman attempted to shut it all down by stating that he alone had spoken with his father, the Emperor. That he alone speaks with his full authority. However, it surprisingly didn't work. Actually causing more shouting. Actually stating that it caused them to seemingly lose a little of their fear of Gilliman. Forcing him to appeal again. To highlight how Ultramar isn't the problem, but the rest of the Imperium is. But it's all a very intriguing moment, and really reveals that, maybe, it actually wasn't the Tetrarchy that was the problem, but the way that Gilliman actually went about implementing it all. That he actually inadvertently caused himself the headache by announcing the eight extra chapters of his sons at the same time because there wasn't really any severe uproar from the announcement of the Tetrarchs at all. It wasn't until he announced the extra chapters that all hell broke loose. Which, given he had just ended the first stage of Indomitus and disbanded the Unnumbered Sons, largely due to that political pressure of a seeming legion, you have to say it was a surprising lack of... I don't know how to describe it, but perception or awareness by Gilliman that he should have realised it would have caused fear and apprehension. Marnius Kalgar viewed it all as evidence his Primarch was right, that power corrupts. But actually, in really rereading this moment and thinking about it, I don't think that that was the case at all with it being the announcement of the force of 10 chapters in Ultramar that caused the problem, I actually think the opposition was all rooted in fear. Fear of history. The knowledge that the Primarchs and their legions were the cause of the Imperium's demise. That they nearly ended it once, and now here's a Primarch doing exactly the same thing again. So no, the Tetrarchs aren't Gilliman's biggest mistake, but he did make a mistake in how he announced it all. That he should have really learnt and expected a visceral reaction to the huge expansion of Astartes' forces, and really announce them another time, or even honestly not at all just implemented and founded them at a more local level. And considering the visceral reaction, the mention of the Emperor not being enough to quell them, even actually firing the people more, it could well be the formation of these eight new chapters within Ultramar that could actually prove to be Gilliman's biggest mistake instead. But as always everyone, what do you think? What do you think of Gilliman's formation of the Tetrarchs of Ultramar? Are they a prototype within Ultramar that, if successful,
could be expanded to the rest of the Imperium. Would Gilliman have confidence in the other lines to perform in this role? Is it actually a necessary aspect if he ever wants to expand it outwards? And did he actually make a mistake in announcing the eight extra chapters in Ultramar at the same time? Should he really have realized that that would be the problem? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Huge thank you to all my subscribers. Your support truly means a lot to me. It really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too? But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.